Hi there, my name is Cy Brand, I'm the team's C++ developer advocate, and today I'm going to show you how to get started with C++ in Visual Studio. I'm going to show you how to install VS, get it set up for C++, create a project, debug your code, and include a dependency. To download Visual Studio, you'll want to go to visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads. Here you can find various versions of Visual Studio 2022 that you can install. Depending on your needs, this may be the community version, professional, or enterprise. If you'd like to know the difference between all of these, you can go to compare editions. If you'd like to try out new features before everyone else, you can try the preview channel. Once you've downloaded the installer for your selected version, you can pick which workloads you would like to install. These are collections of components, such as compilers and SDKs that you might want to use. For C++, you may want desktop development, mobile development, game development, and Linux and embedded development. You may also want optional components down the right hand side, such as the VC package package manager, or different versions of the Windows SDK if you have a particular version you're targeting. After installing Visual Studio, you can run it and you'll see a window something like this. Along the right hand side here are options for cloning an existing repository, or opening solutions or folders you already have on your system, or creating a brand new project, which is what we're going to do today. If we click that, then depending on what workloads you installed in the installer, you'll have different options here. But for C++, the main ones we would care about are your console app, which will create a Visual Studio project, which is great if you're targeting Windows, and it will be a simple Hello World application. Or if you're doing cross-platform development, for example, targeting Windows and Linux and maybe something else, you might want to use CMake instead, which is a build system targeted exactly at cross-platform development. So if we go ahead and click that, then we can say create a CMake app project and hit the create button to make it. When you create a CMake project, it's going to make a simple Hello World style application. All of your files in your project are in the Solution Explorer here. So we can click the root CMake list.txt, and this is going to show us our main project information, such as the minimum version of CMake required, uh, the name of the project, and it also says to include a subdirectory, which is this CMake app directory. So this one itself has a CMake list.txt, which says to build an executable called CMake app out of these two files. It also sets the um, CXX standard property, which says the version of the C++ standard to use to C++ 20. Maybe we want to modernize this and we're going to make this C++ 23. So let's have a look at the source code. Um, you can see that this is a, a pretty straightforward Hello World style program. It prints out Hello CMake. So we could go and build and run this application by clicking this here. And this will run CMake, build our program, and run it, printing out Hello CMake. Let's say we want to make some changes, say we want to modernize it a bit. We're going to use C23 and the new std print ln instead of C out. So we could do hash include. Oops, if I could type it helps. And then it will give us a bunch of options depending on what is installed in our system. But we want print. And then we're going to replace this line with std print. LN. And you can see this is IntelliSense giving us a bunch of options um, based on what we're already typing. And we can navigate overloads for overloaded functions. We're going to print LN and then Copilot is suggesting printing out Hello World. So we can accept that with tab. We can save that and we can rerun it. This will rebuild and we printed out Hello World. If you want to debug your program, then you can use Visual Studio right from here. We can set a breakpoint by clicking in the margin. And then when we run our application, note that it has not printed out anything because it stopped earlier. Any local variables you have will be shown down here. We don't currently have any. 
but you can see it stopped on this line. And if we uh, step over the function call, then it will print out hello world. Now, what if we wanted to add some dependency to our project? Say we want to make a small game engine using a library like FDL. Uh, for that, we can use VC package. VC package is a package manager for C and C++. Uh, this is the website. So you can come here and browse the packages to see all of the packages which are available to install. You can search them. There's, as you can see, two and a half thousand packages. So there's plenty for you to get started with. Now, VC package comes bundled with Visual Studio as long as you select the relevant optional component in the installer. And in order to use it, there's a few things we need to do. First thing is we need to tell VC package what our dependencies are. We do that by creating a VC package.json file. In here, there's a bunch of options for um, what you can specify. Um, the main thing is we want to specify our dependencies, of course. Uh, let's specify we want to use SDL3, which is a library for building multimedia applications like video games. Uh, the other thing we need to do is if we are using the built-in version of VC package, we need to tell VC package which version of the um, ports library to use. Uh, the ports library is basically the collection of all of the different libraries that VC package can um, install. We do that by using this built-in baseline. Uh, Copilot has suggested something there. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to go to um, the VC package GitHub repository, which I had open already. And I'm just going to pick the most recent commit. Um, so this commit ID in uh, the address bar is going to give me a baseline to use. I then need to tell CMake to um, use VC package for getting all the dependencies, which I can do in CMake presets.json. That is a configuration for CMake settings, such as uh, what build system we're going to be using, uh, what compiler we're going to be using, all that kind of stuff. So for VC package, we need to tell CMake to use its toolchain file, which is specified using the toolchain file option. And this is stored in a specified place in the VC package root folder, which is stored as an environment variable. And under that folder, it's in scripts, build systems, VC package dot CMake. So we go and save that. Uh, Visual Studio has realized we've changed our toolchain file, so we're going to regenerate the CMake cache, and now this is starting to run a VC package install. Uh, the first time you do this, it will take a little bit of time to download and install all of the dependencies it needs, but we can fast forward, and that has now finished installing SDL. And it's even telling us where, what we need to pass to CMake in order to, uh, to use it. So let's go and do that now. Let's copy paste this and put it into our CMake lists. So we find the SDL3 package, and then we're going to link our CMake app against SDL3. And then when we build our project will be linked against SDL3 and ready to use it. To show you what this could look like, I grabbed a simple SDL3 Hello World program from GitHub, which just changes the color of the window and tracks the mouse cursor. That's everything I wanted to show you today. I hope it's given you a taste of how to get started with Visual Studio and C++. See you next time.